What's going on? It's Michael from Reality Hacker Co. I'm excited to dive into the power of awareness today. If this is not your first time here, go ahead and like, subscribe, comment, let us know that you're with us. Really want you to make you a part of the community. If it is your first time here, go ahead and like, subscribe and comment. Really want to make you a part of our community here. Today, we're going to be diving into chapter 16 of the power of awareness. I'm really excited because this entire book, uh, I've probably read it 25 times in the last five years, but it also is just, you know, the chapters are short, but there's so much substance. Um, you know, years and years ago in, in my religious days, when I did a lot of pastoral ministry, I dove into uh, a lot of the Hebrew portions of the Old Testament of the Bible. And I loved studying that because three or four paragraphs in English of, you know, a psalm were I remember, I think one of the Psalms, Psalm 119, the first two paragraphs of that are actually like four or five pages in Hebrew. And so <clears throat> I really love, you know, how Neville is able to speak concisely, speak shortly, but also speak with depth and provide pages and pages and minutes and minutes of information uh, inside of the work he writes. So chapter 16, personal impotence, self-surrender is essential. And by that is meant the confession of personal impotence. I can of my own self do nothing. And since creation is finished, it is impossible to force anything into being. The example of magnetism previously given is a good illustration. You cannot make magnetism. It can only be displayed. You cannot make the law of magnetism. If you want to build a magnet, you can only do so by conforming to the law of magnetism. In other words, when you surrender yourself or yield to the law. In like manner, when you use the faculty of assumption, you are conforming to a law just as real as the law governing magnetism. You can neither create nor change the law of assumption. It is in this respect that you are impotent. You can only yield or conform, and since all of your experiences are the result of your assumptions, consciously or unconsciously, the value of consciously using the power of assumption surely must be obvious. Willingly identify yourself with that which you most desire, knowing that will find expression through you. Yield to the feeling of the wish fulfilled and be consumed as its victim, and then rise as the prophet of the law of assumption. Lots of words, lots of big words, lots of mystical words, but we're going to break it down. Self-surrender is essential, and by that is meant the confession of personal impotence, right? So really what we want to talk about here is the seeming separate self, the seeming individual identity, right? Of that self, nothing can be done. We do not do with our body as the causal force of things. Consciousness is the causal force, and the movements of the body are effects of that cause. Self-surrender is essential. By that is meant the confession of personal impotence. I love this because it, he's not wrong, right? Of this, of this separate self, nothing can be done. But when I understand that I am all imagination, experiencing itself as a seeming separate self for a short while, then I really get to move myself into a place of power. I can of my own self do nothing, right? That is part of a scripture in the New Testament. And I believe the rest of it says something to the effect, but God works through me. Since creation is finished, it is impossible to force anything into being. This is really amazing because if we really, really begin to believe that creation is finished, can we really begin to believe that force ever will make things happen before they're meant to happen. And the truth is, I think the answer to that is, is, is yes, but also not necessarily in the best way. You know, I find that there's some inner correlation between my desires and the person I'm becoming. So much of this life is about who we become, right? Not what we do, but who we become, because who we become determines what we do. And this is something that so many of us neglect in our personal development journey, we get so focused on the goals, the money, the cars, the houses, that we neglect the, the consciousness that we are. We neglect the molding and shaping of that into an entity that experiences those things that we want to experience 
on a regular basis, right? Because it's not about the things. It's never about the things. It's about the feeling that we think we're going to have when we experience the thing, okay? This is why it's so important that we yield to the law. The example of magnetism that's previously given, we talk about this earlier in the, the power of awareness. It's a good illustration. You can't make it. You can't bring it into being. It exists. It's, it's unalterable, right? In this dimension of time space, the law of magnetism is immovable, immutable, right? It can only be displayed. It can only be uh, manipulated, right? It is already. It cannot be formed. It already is. And we must conform to what that is. You cannot make the law of magnetism, right? If you want to build a magnet, you can only do so by conforming to the law of magnetism, right? You can't build a magnet, seek to build a magnet, not with all of the right characteristics of metals, of rocks, of polarities, of ions. You have to understand the law of magnetism if you want to create a magnet, right? So in other words, when you surrender yourself or yield to the law, right? In like manner, when you use the faculty of assumption, you're conforming to the law a law that is just as real as the law of magnetism, the law that governs magnetism, right? Because it's not even a law of magnetism. It's a law that governs magnetism, right? It's not a law of assumption. It's a law that governs assumption. And that law is that our basic assumptions become reality. And everything Neville's talking about in these last couple chapters is all about surrendering to the imagination that we are in total trust immersing ourselves in the feeling of the wish fulfilled that we might be wholly conscious of our own perfection and live and express that perfection from here. You cannot create or change the law of assumption. You can't, right? It's in this respect that you're impotent, right? We can't change it. You can't go around and manipulate what it is. It is what it is because you are what you are and what you are is unchangeable, immovable, immutable, perfect awareness that is experiencing itself for a short while as a seeming human. You can only yield or conform to the law. And since all of your experiences are the results of your assumptions, either consciously or unconsciously, the value of consciously using the power of assumption surely must be obvious. I love this because he's almost, he's almost being sarcastic here, right? you understand that you can only yield to a law and a law that is immutable will me it means that this law happens over and 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 over again in perpetuity. The law is immovable. It is immutable. It is fact. It is as objective fact as objective fact can get. Right? As he says, in like manner, when you use the faculty of assumption, you're conforming to a law just as real as the law governing magnetism. Since all of your experiences are the result of your assumptions, consciously or unconsciously, the value of consciously using the power of assumption surely must be obvious. Consciously using the power of assumption surely must be obvious. Surely, right? Willingly identify yourself with that which you most desire, knowing that it will find expression through you. I love this because it kind of paints us and this thing as unionable concepts, right? They can be united, brought into one, because at the end of the day, all is one experiencing itself in a multitude of forms. Willingly identify yourself with that which you most desire, right? So it's not about identifying yourself with a thing. And this is something that a lot of people get caught up in identifying yourself with a million dollars. Like you can sit in your room and you can visualize yourself sitting in a room with a million dollars all you want. And there's definitely, a, there's some far out chance that you may end up someday winding up with a million dollars, right? But we're talking about willingly identifying ourselves with that, which we most desire. So in this case, a million dollars can be more easily defined as a millionaire, right? Somebody with a million dollars in net worth. And all of a sudden, think about that. When I begin to really extrapolate this and get very, very clear, all of a sudden, it doesn't really become super hard for my brain to idealize things that could be in place in order 
for that thing to be actually true. Now, the cool thing about this is that it is inherently true because any concept we choose to identify with is ultimately what we bring into our lives. So yes, you could sit in a room for days and days and weeks and weeks and, and manifest something and find your way into a million dollars. But the question is, can I go throughout my day engaging in human society as all imagination while maintaining those states of consciousness, walking around from, from the place of being what I want to be, walking through neighborhoods, walking through cities, malls, uh, theaters, uh, wherever you go, business conferences, seminars, retreats, can I walk through these places as though I am what I want to be? Can I go to galas? Can I go to, uh, you know, jazz clubs, wherever you want to go? Can I go and exist, right? Because this is the thing. It's not about what you do in your room. It's about what you, where you are when you are active in the world, right? That's, that's, those are the states of consciousness that are really, you know, having an effect. Sure, yes, our subconscious is ridiculously responsible for so many of the things that we bring into this world. But man, there is such an opportunity th for us throughout the day to identify from a place of being that which we want to be. And I love the second part of the sentence, willingly identify yourself with that which you most desire, knowing that it will find expression through you. This is the thing. He says through you. He doesn't say to you. He says through you, knowing that it finds expression through you, through you, right? You are an active participant, an active co-creator, right? You are an active part of this because as he says in earlier chapters, you're the writer, director, producer, and actor in your own play. Willingly identify yourself with that which you most desire, knowing that will find expression through you. Now, the knowing here is very, very interesting because it's not a mental knowing. It's a knowing in your heart. It's a knowing in your gut, okay? But here's the thing. As long as we're identifying as a separate being, it's really hard for that knowing to actually work for us. It's because it's only mental. It's only mental. And, it's not, and, the, and the, the proverb doesn't say, as a man thinks in his mind, so he becomes. It says, as a man thinks in his heart, so he becomes, right? That, that, that consciousness, that captivated consciousness has to live right here in our gut, right? You could call it your solar plexus, your, uh, your, I think your root chakra, I don't know. Um, your gut, right? Your, right? That's where we really want to see this. That knowing should live in your gut. And honestly, if the knowing doesn't live in your gut, then it probably isn't something that is true for you at the moment. And that's okay. It's okay, right? Neville doesn't say you're going to get this overnight. What he does say is that if through persistence, how many times does Neville say persistence, right? How many times does Neville go into the need to persist, right? Because what's happening here is we're moving from state to state in such a way that a new state becomes our dominant consciousness, becomes our dominant consciousness. If a state doesn't become dominant for us, its contents will not dominate our life. But the states that are dominant for us their contents dominate our life. So in order to move into a new life, we must move permanently into new states of consciousness. Understanding that of this separate self, there is no power, but as all imagination, everything in the universe and beyond, this is, this is the movement that I move with. This is the awareness that I move with. Because this is all about what's going on in your body. States of consciousness can really be summarized by what's going on in your body. If you're feeling scared, you're in a scared state of consciousness. If you're feeling angry, you're in an angry state of consciousness. If you're feeling happy, you're in a happy state of consciousness. We're talking about here in our gut. We're not talking about in our minds. And it's very simple. It's not complex. But we need to be able to trust our bodies, these bodies. That's a big part of manifesting is a healthy relationship with your body because your body is where so much happens. Your body is where memory is retained. Your body is where states of consciousness are produced. Yield to the feeling of the wish fulfilled and be consumed as its victim. Then rises the profit of the law of assumption. Now I don't want to get too visceral with this because it's really easy to do so, but he talks about yielding to the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Let's just break down yielding for the sake of conceptual understanding, right? Yield, when, it, when's, when's, when do you see a yield sign? Usually when I see a yield sign, it's going to be near a school. It's going to be maybe in a parking lot at a mall. Uh, they're going to be yield. I don't know. There's yield signs all over. But uh, kids just went back to school. That's probably why that's on my mind, right? But when you, he, when you see a yield sign, 
right? You're ultimately stopping and you're waiting for something. You're kind of allowing what you do to be dictated by whatever this thing is happening, right? So if you're, you're yielding for children, you're stopping your car, you're taking action to such a degree that what is happening, what is, what is going on here is ultimately being uh, given your full attention, your full focus. And he talks about yielding to the feeling of the wish fulfilled. So if I kind of you know, look for a second as, as, as the feeling of the wish fulfilled as a child, right on the street, that's walking across the crosswalk and I'm driving in my car, all of a sudden I can kind of really embody that feeling by moving into the consciousness of that, of that, of that child or, or the image of the child, right? The child represents the consciousness of the thing desired. And I can kind of use that imagery in my mind to meld with that and then begin to see the world from that place. It's really amazing how you can leverage your imagination, how leverage, leverage your brain to really move your heart into a space that really does some amazing things. So be consumed as its victim, then rise as the prophet of the law of assumption. You know, I don't think we need to dive into that too much, but at the end of the day, you know, being consumed as a victim is ultimately being uh, powerless. You know, we can use that as a term here, powerless to something else. And, and I wonder what would happen if we really trusted what we were reading here and we made ourselves powerless to any other concept, but the law of assumption, right? That ultimately the states that we live in and exist in dominantly become our lives. And as we move into new dominant states, those new dominant contents become the, the aspects of our experience. And so this is a really good chapter. It's really short, but there's a lot to dig in. We might dig in at a little bit of a later date, but hey, I'm really grateful that we got to spend this time together. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this reading and commentary on chapter 16, Personal Impotence in the Power of Awareness. If you have any questions you want to share, go ahead and write in the comments, but please go ahead and like, subscribe, uh, come onto our channel. You know, We'd love to see you, love to make friends with you because uh, we're building something for the long, long term here. And uh, yeah, I have a lot of fun doing this and I hope you have a lot of fun listening to it, okay? So that being said, I will talk to you soon.